So we're going to be doing the uh, DPF delete and the EGR delete today on the F450. We just bought this guy. It's got about 175,000 miles, I believe, on it. Uh, just put some new tires on it. Should be good. But I'm going to check it out and just kind of step you guys through everything that we do. I've already taken all the bolts underneath and where the EGR is going to be and lubricated them with the VD40 yesterday. And then uh, I forgot what the other stuff's called. I used something blaster, but I'll show you in a minute. But I went ahead and did that. I've been driving it around, getting it pretty warm. Hopefully it's going to make life a little easier. But I'm going to start out trying to program it just to make sure that it will program. And uh, I've been told you can program it and drive it up to 25 miles just to make sure there's no problems with it. So we'll start with tuner that we bought. And I thought this was very interesting because we're an AV company. We do concerts down sound stage lighting. It's using a HDMI cable to actually do the signal and power up to this thing, which is kind of neat. But plug into the ODB2 port, run to this converter, and then you're going to have the HDMI cable that goes up to this. We're going to plug it up and see what happens, see if it needs to be so updated. So first thing we're going to do to take off all of our exhaust here is we're going to take off these cross members. So there's two 13 millimeter bolts on this side and probably two 13 on the other side. So we'll take them out and see how And there were two more 13 millimeter on this side that I'm going to take out. And then we're going to start taking out uh, this other cross member going under the transmission. So we had 18 millimeter on this side and I'm pretty sure it'll be 18 millimeter on the other side. The ones in the center look a little bit bigger. So we'll see on those. So I ended up putting a jack underneath the transfer case on this four-wheel drive just to give it some, some support. But I'm pretty sure those are 13 sixteenths and then the other side will be back to what we took off over here. Problem on mine, it's uh, this truck, we bought it with a rebuild title and where the damage occurred, it actually has bent this cross member to where I'm not gonna be able to get this out, sadly. So I might have to see what I can do with leaving that cross member on there. We got our big black uh, harmonic thing that kind of helps out with tone and keeps things from shaking. And right behind it is going to be our first sensor. And I'm trying to get this light on my head, or maybe you can see it, but the end of it is this black cable that's right here. Sorry, hard to position my head like that. But it's going to be right here, and on the other side, you'll just squeeze it, and it'll pull let's out. Pull this first sensor off the track to where it'll be a little bit easier to see. But that's where you'll end up pushing in, and then you can just pull it off from the other side. So this one's going to be real tight, but you can see, I'm trying to adjust that light on my head. There's a little bit of a temperature guy here to keep things as a heat shield. It's kind of just snap together right here. I'm going to use a screwdriver to open that up. And under here is going to be where the DEF fluid actually goes in. I'm sorry, the, my phone is blocking the shadow. So we're going to end up taking it off. And then there's a sensor back here. And then if I'm not mistaken, there's two push buttons. You have to push both in really hard on this to get it to pop out. And then this is a typical sensor you push and pull up. And now that we've got both of these guys loose, I couldn't get my uh, heat shield to unsnap, so I just worked it back to where I could get to it to take it off. We have this EGR sensor here, or sorry, not EGR, EGT sensor, and we'll follow it to the other side and disconnect it. Let's see if it'll focus. This is where it ends up. If I get my hand in there, and it is right there. So I ended up working my hand around to get up to there and uh, I was able to push the tab back here and then pull with my hand, other hand, coming up from this side. Just enough room in between the frame. to go way back here to where the actual DPF system is. And you can see where my light is kind of highlighting, there's gonna be a connector that's there. And there's also a few more sensors that we'll find and show you as well. And then right behind where we just showed you to take off the big connector, there's another sensor that's right here. And you kind of just have to chase down the cable, but it'll be the same press and release. Sure, for that sensor, there's somebody that's more skilled than I am, but I ended up taking the hammer and just barely tapping on where this wire is held on. 
That way I could pull the sensor down and disconnect it from here because I just could not get my hands anywhere near far enough to be able to get that out. But hopefully that will make that a little bit easier for you guys. So now we're all the way to the back and you can see that we have one more sensor here and then this gigantic O2 sensor guy that's here. So we'll chase this down up on the frame and if we need to it looks like it has the parts holding it on and I bet that this black part is probably holding on that O2 sensor so we might have to do that to disconnect. So this O2 sensor is pretty big and uh, you can see this red piece that's on it so you'll end up needing to use a screwdriver to get it back as far as you can and then after you get it back as far as you can you can end up pushing down and pulling it out. So now we're going to be taking off the exhaust. This is not the side you take off. You need to take it off from the front. There's a bolt here and a bolt way on the other side. And it's 13 millimeter. And uh, from what I've read, there's a hole in the frame to make it to where you can use an extension to get the one on that side off. So I got the front ones off and now we're about to take off the back ones. And see if I can zoom in a little. So there's going to be three here, and you actually do take the nuts off on this, and they're kind of driven in on the other side. So I'm going to take those loose. So to remove the little things holding the exhaust on, the actual muffler straps, whatever you want to call them, I bought this tool that was highly recommended. I've always just lubricated it up and used some vice grips, but we'll see if this makes the job easier. But now we're going to just going to start pushing all those off. So I usually just lubricate it and then we'll try this out. So I finally got it out. I've heard all sorts of estimates on the weight on this thing. And my professional guess is it's pretty dadgum heavy. Pretty hard to do with one person, but it is possible. So got it out and uh, that was all the sensors. So we're good on that. Ended up having to cut one of the exhaust brackets because I just could not get it out even with the tool. The tool did help. I Honestly, I'd recommend it but uh, about to take a look and see what's all involved to put the other one on. The first bolt I tried to take off even though I lubricated it for days and done everything it broke off so right now I'm just gonna unplug. There was an orange sensor that was located right in here. I unplugged it, moved it up here. There's an orange sensor that was plugged in right here. My truck's a 2011, so it doesn't have one back there, so it's just those two sensors that I can find. But I'm about to fire it up, see how it goes. So we got it running, really not much louder than it was. It sounds really good. You can hear the turbo spool up a little bit more. But uh, I'll make another video on how to get these bolts out that I broke off. And uh, I'm not going to drive it anymore until then, too. And I hope this video helps you guys out.